The congregation may remain seated. We begin and worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For over 125 years, parents have been calming the hearts of their children by teaching them this wonderful song we'll look at today, Away in a Manger. And for over 125 years, children have been calming the hearts of their parents by singing this song to them. It's a song of salvation. Let's look at it closely today. We'll look at the three verses, how Jesus has you see his manger bed. And then the second verse, Jesus reminds you that he sees you when you sleep in your beds at night. And then the third verse that Jesus will see, he'll oversee it, watch over it, and then take us away on our deathbed, take us to heaven. So God comfort us all, a beautiful hymn drawn from God's word. What child is this who can do such things? Let's sing about that in our next hymn. What child is this? Hymn 67. Before our children sing the first verse, we'll, we'll think about that first verse, how Jesus has you, Jesus has you see his little manger bed. 1 Peter 1, 8-9. Though you have not seen him, Jesus, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It was God's miracle that Mary was at that manger to see Jesus in that manger bed. 
Nine months earlier, she'd just been a young lady, engaged to a young man. And then God came to her and said, Now, a virgin birth, you, you are the one. She was at that manger by God's miracle. She held God, the Savior of the world. It was a miracle of God's grace that Joseph was there. He was going to do the kind, but the natural thing, divorce her quietly. God's word came to Joseph. It's the Son of God. Name him Jesus. Joseph believed, was at that manger bed, named him Jesus. Children will talk about how it was God's miracle that the shepherds were there. They would have had no clue, except the angels led them right there to the manger. The wise men, same thing. God's star guiding them to God's son. Away in a manger. Away from a crib. You didn't even have a crib for a bed. Away from room. Any room in the inn. Away from the world, Jesus was born. John says that Jesus came to that which was his own. He came, he came to the world. He created the world. But his own did not receive him. Mary should have had a multitude of lost and condemned sinners on their own. Just should have been crammed in to see Jesus in his manger bed. Isaiah 7, a virgin was pregnant. Isaiah 7 This virgin went to Bethlehem, Micah 5, promised birth in Bethlehem. She was from the tribe of Judah, Genesis 49. The stars in the sky, as our children are going to sing, they should not have been able to shine down on Jesus. There should have been so many heads leaning over. This was the Savior of the world. But they did not receive him. Nobody does. It was a miracle, all those who were there, We're there, God's miracle of grace. And ours today, too, that you, you're singing this first verse about Jesus and his manger bed. Even though you don't see him, children, you love him, like 1 Peter says. Even though you don't see him now, you believe in him. Listen to him, proclaim it today. And joy to the world that we're going to sing, it's in their hearts It's my double joy as I listen to the little ones or the grade school or confirmation kids. I get to hear it, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they believe it as they say it. So double joy this day. Parents, I I hope you, you do. You're probably nervous now. How will the children do? We all are, especially after Saturday when it never usually goes so well then. They're doing well. They're doing eternally well. They don't see Jesus, and yet they see him. People then, 20 yards away that first Christmas, they didn't see the manger bed and the Christ in it. 20 centuries later, these children do. And not only see Jesus, they believe in him. Not only believe in him, they love him. And they are receiving the goal that we all have for them, certainly, but the goal of their faith that God has for them, the salvation of their soul. Not only the stars in the sky look down upon baby Jesus, by the miracle of God's grace, we are all looking down upon him, his manger bed, right now. Our little ones will sing that first verse of Away in a Manger.
Again, before our little ones sing the second verse, we'll look at that second verse and God's word, a thought behind one of the beautiful thoughts in that second verse. Not only does Jesus have us see his manger bed, Jesus watches over our bed all the time, all through the night. Psalm 63, 6 to 7. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I was only about nine years old when somebody robbed our house, but I remember like it was yesterday, the police in the house going through, checking all the closets and everything else. Did they miss any? Ooh, ooh, were the burglars still in there? And, and my parents, and that night, let me tell you, all five of us kids were in bed with my folks, sleeping there. We weren't going to sleep in our own beds that night. We were so scared. Children, have you ever done that? Get up in the middle of the night, maybe a nightmare, and, Mama! Daddy! And mommy and daddy come running. Or you drag your blankie in and hop in bed with mom and dad because you're scared and they just make room. And that's what parents do. But children, have you ever had your mom scream out in the middle of the night, Son, daughter, please, I had a nightmare. Have you ever had your daddy with his blankie come in and say, I need to sleep? No, you haven't evidently, huh? Well, what do we do, we grown-ups, when we can't sleep? I can't sleep a lot of times. You talk to your parents, they'll say the same thing. Some nights they just can't sleep because they had a nightmare. Or maybe they just can't sleep because of the guilt or the fear that how are we going to pay our bills or, or frustration. Maybe some of our elderly people because of the loneliness. They have nobody in their house. They just have nobody to talk to or call out to. They have nobody. And so they can't sleep. And what do we do when we can't sleep? The grown-ups. Well, this is what we do, what King David did. On my bed, he couldn't sleep. I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. When we can't sleep at night, Christians, we remember Jesus, who's up in heaven. He's not sleeping either. He's watching over us. And we go through these hymn verses, maybe this verse we'll hear about, or Bible passages, or maybe we turn on the lights, not because we're afraid of the dark, but so we can read our Bibles and, and re re be reminded of the promises. So we remember him, and then pretty soon we are singing in the shadows. We're not afraid of the dark shadows ahead or the shadows of night. We start to sing. Even the valley of the shadow of death, even if we're going to die, we can sing. We don't have to be afraid because Jesus is watching over us. He took care of it all. You know, I, I asked my Sunday school teacher once, what does it mean, no crying Jesus makes? And she said, well, that was just what the author wrote. And you can say this, that you know, crying that Jesus never cried. Well, crying is a way that little babies communicate that they're hungry and other things. But... Jesus cried, she said, also that when Lazarus died, when you're sad, you cry sometimes. That's not sinful. But Jesus never cried because he was angry at his parents or somebody else or cried because he was worried. No, he only cried perfectly to save us. And all night, staying up all night because he's worried, Jesus never did that. He did stay up all night once, it says in Luke 6, though, so he could pray. When Jesus stayed up all night, it was to save us. The Lord, our righteousness, stayed up all night without sin so that when we struggle with sin and we can't sleep, he's paid for it all. He's replaced it all with his holy life. And then there was that night that Jesus was up. Remember that night in the middle of the day when it was completely dark, Good Friday? Remember Jesus cried out to his Father in heaven, Are you watching over me? My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out like David cried out for help. But God didn't help, did he? Because Jesus was damned as he took the sins of the world. He got no help from heaven. He got no answers from heaven. He hung on the cross in that darkness, that long night of damnation. But he said, that's done now, it's finished. And now our dark nights, he's watching over us, and he helps. 
and he answers. We sing that with our Easter hymn. Do you remember? He rose from the dead after that dark night of the cross. All done. He lives to silence all my fears. He lives to wipe away my tears. He lives to calm my troubled heart. He lives all blessings to impart. Children, listen carefully to this second verse. Your parents love this. We got yelled at once when we didn't have it. One son, only once, it only happened once, that we didn't have this for Sunday school. We got yelled at by parents. They love this one for you to learn it. Listen carefully to this one. Because then maybe when you wake up at the middle of the night, you'll think of, Lord Jesus, you're watching over me, as this hymn verse says. And you won't even have to call your parents. And they'll get to sleep all night. But we had a seventh grader leave in the early service, and she said, I still get my parents up. And her dad said, yeah, I have a shoe by the bed. He was teasing he, he would be there for her, always is. Parents will be there. You call them in the middle of the night, that's okay. But above it all, let's hear who's watching all through the night over your bed. Our little ones will sing the second verse. The service continues with the singing of hymn 62.
Verse 3 of Away in a Manger is going to take us to a very scary place. Our death, the funeral, and then that deathbed, the grave. But we're not afraid, even with our children here. We're not afraid because first it will take us to the death, the funeral, and the grave of Jesus. And we know what happened there, Matthew 28, 5 to 6. The angel said to the women, Easter morning, the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. 
This past year, seven from our membership, seven of our brothers and sisters in Christ were on their deathbed. And they successfully made it, even though on their deathbed. All seven of them died. And it's a hard thing. Pastors are often called and spend a lot of time at the deathbed. Husbands and wives of decades, 50, 55 years, they hold, they hold each other's hands as one dies because they want to stay close by each other forever. They just wish this would go on, wish they could be together, but one of them was dying. Family members, children, grandchildren, sometimes great-grandchildren. All seven died here at St. Paul's. And then you come for the funeral, and we go back in the room where the video is there, and, but they say goodbye with that casket, and often the wife or the husband will, will kiss the spouse on the cheek, and or you grab the arm, the lifeless body, but then you go back there and they close the casket, and you have a prayer. But then you know what we do, children. We come walking down here, they push the casket down, and we come down here to hear the word of God. And all is well, even funerals, all is well. The deathbed is stronger than us. It will get us, the deathbed will get us. But our joy is, be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever. And love me, I pray. The deathbed is not stronger than Jesus. He'll stay close by you forever when you're on your deathbed. But he beat the deathbed. See, our final reading, you caught it, was an Easter reading. Jesus had a deathbed, the cross, where he paid for the sins of the whole world. Died, took them away, gone, those sins of the whole world. Paid for in full. And then they had a funeral for Jesus. They wept and they put his body in a grave. But then the angels, the angels came at Christmas to proclaim Messiah's birth. They also came at Easter. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Jesus rose from the dead. He really will be close by us forever. But children, do you see why your parents love this little song to teach it to you? Because this is the way life can only work, only work well with Jesus. Because just on our own, believers and unbelieving parents, you want to be close by your children forever. You love them when you were little. We, we held you and raised you and do all the things that you do, all the activities and all the fun and vacation, all the things we do. We love to be close by you forever, but you grow up. And then you go away, and then you have your own kids. And then we love to be by, by the grandchildren forever. In the basement, I mentioned, I don't get to see our grandkids till February, and somebody said, we don't get to see ours till June. And the, and the man began to, Grandpa began to cry a little bit when he thought of that. We love to be close by our children and their children forever. But we can't on our own. And so we baptize our children And now you know what? Who's close by you forever in baptism? Jesus. You're his. And who's close by your parents through their baptism? Jesus. And when Jesus is close by you, and Jesus is close by your parents, then all is well. Because when the deathbed comes, and it will, and it rips us from each other, Those living stay here with Jesus. Those who die go to be with Jesus. Someday we're with each other forever in heaven. Away in a manger is a song of two beds of Jesus. Two beds. With a full manger bed, Jesus came into our world. With an empty deathbed, the risen Savior will take us into his world, into heaven.
One by one, this is what's happening. One by one with our Savior. Bless all the dear children in your tender care. That's what he's doing for all of us right now. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and take us to heaven to live with you there. The children, you're going to join, be joined by the congregation to sing this last verse, scary to the world, death. Not to us. The third verse of Away in a Manger.
We pray. We pray with thanks to God, children, for what you have shared with us about the birth of our Savior, Jesus. What a wonderful thing to listen to again. We also pray that God will keep that faith growing in your hearts. And three requests today, three birthdays, all worshiping with us this morning. Um, This is the day the Lord has made until he takes us to heaven to be with him there. We thank him for all the blessings on earth. So we, we celebrate with our three members for their birthdays as well. We pray. <clears throat> Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus, as we gather to celebrate the wonders of your birth. We confess that all the words we sing and speak fall far short of the praise we sinners owe you, our loving Savior. You left your throne in heaven for us. A stable was your first home, a manger, your first bed. Yet for our sakes you endured far greater humiliation as you picked up a cross for us. You suffered the shame, the guilt, the punishment, and the death we deserved. Because we can do nothing to save ourselves, you, Lord Jesus, did it all. Accept and uh, and bless the praise that came from the mouths of our children this day. By your holy word on their lips, keep these young ones true to you their whole lives. May the faith in their hearts and in all our hearts burn and shine brightly until the day we see you face to face in glory. Your saving birth, O Savior, has blessed every area of our lives now and forevermore. And so fill the hearts of Ruth Berger, Chris Goodrow, and Nyla Talek with thanks for another year of your grace and blessings. With the best yet to come in heaven, we still thankfully rejoice that this is the day the Lord has made. Hear us, loving Father in heaven, as we join to pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As well as the Bible talking about God's blessing upon all of us, which we will hear shortly, the blessing of our Lord, the Bible also talks about our blessing. The Psalms are full of our blessing, our Father in heaven. And so before the Lord's blessing to us, our children sing a hymn of blessing to the Lord. Congregation may be seated.
please rise, congregation. For heaven's promised blessing upon you now and forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our final hymn. Welcome to all of you. Special thank you to Caitlin Cole, 8 o'clock, 10.30, 8 o'clock, 10.30 in the bulletin, and she just worked her way through it beautifully, both services. Appreciate that. Uh, Sunday school teachers and, and uh, Jeff Goddard, our director, Leslie, thank, thank you so much for the work you all do. And um, as one grandpa said, it's so neat, some of you are here, to, to watch my kids teaching the grandkids what the kids were taught. So on it goes, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, children. Wonderfully done to the glory of God. Uh, sorry about the blocking out there, the chimney. What that is, is the chimney, the mortar inside is brittle and uh, very weak. So they're going to take that chimney down and put it back up properly with mortar. And uh, the, the roof, beautifully done. We're very thankful for all of that. 
In the basement sign-up sheets for the uh, pictorial directory, uh, that's going on this screen, and all the information is down there. Elaine Livingston, I, I think, is down there. Karen Primo, I believe, some others, too. Pastor Nauman's the pastor to talk to if you have questions on it. He's working through that with everybody, and thanks to all who are doing that hard work. And it's just, just a good thing. Um, nice opportunity there as well. And it's all on the sheets. There's no pressure, no cost to anybody, unless you so choose to have a family picture. The 2016 offering envelopes are in the basement. If you uh, would take yours home and any family members, that, that helps out as well. God's blessings on our, as we continue our Advent preparation, the Savior is born.